Hello, I'm Oliver Colling and this is my 70s TV childhood. Welcome back to my 70s TV childhood. We're the podcast which looks back at what it was like to grow up as a child in 1970s Britain and the special part that watching television played in our lives back then. It was a happy time for me, growing up, learning lessons about life, and, let's face it, blissfully unaware that before I knew it, I'd be a fully grown adult, with all of the extra pressures and concerns that being an adult brings. It was also a very special time culturally in the UK, as television brought us together as families and communities, in a way it hasn't done since. In a time before video recorders, or catch-up, or digital, The importance of watching something at the time it was broadcast was all important and provided lots for us to talk about at school or in factories and offices the next day. Thanks to all of you who've been in touch via our blog at www.my70stvchildhood.com or via our various social media sites. As I've said before, and I'm sure I'll say again, it really makes producing the podcast worthwhile when I hear about what memories it has inspired in listeners and how they've been transported back to their childhoods. We have had a huge response to our recent episode featuring The Goodies. I think it's produced more reaction and comment than almost any of our previous episodes from the last few years. We've had over 2,000 reactions on our Facebook page, and dozens of comments, mainly from listeners who loved the show. And several of you have been in touch to share your favourite episodes. For example, I've been reminded by Tanya of the episode which was a spoof of Jaws when cod has become so scarce that we need to find something else to fish. Bill, uh, I don't think it's Bill Oddy, well it could be, but I don't think so, reminded me of an episode set in a lighthouse where everything was round and the trio gradually went mad. And many, many of you focused on the extensive recording career of the goodies. I'd forgotten they'd had quite so many hit records, and I feel a bit guilty only mentioning Funky Gibbon and Black Pudding Bertha. Several of you have added, amongst others, the Inbetweenies, and also their version of Wild Thing, to what is now quite a long list of hits. How did I manage to ignore all of those? Anyway, if you want to share your thoughts on anything you've heard on the podcast, or just share your memories, you can do so on the blog and socials, as I believe the kids call them, or by simply emailing me Oliver at my seventies TV childhood dot com. Now I know some of you may be still a bit depressed by our January episode of the podcast, which featured survivors and the gradual collapse of British society into a sort of feral rage following a pandemic. So you may be starting to worry that I'm becoming a bit maudlin in my old age. I don't know about you, but I am becoming a bit more aware of the passage of time. I suppose that once you get to 50-something. It's reasonable to assume that your life is probably over halfway through. Although I am personally confident that advances in medical science will help prolong many of our lives that little bit further. No, what brings it home to me most is when someone in the public eye passes away and you hear their age. I first noticed it with sportsmen and women. For example, cricketers I used to watch in the 1970s are dropping like flies, and some of them are in their 80s. And that still takes me aback a bit. But then I suppose, if you're in your late 30s and mid-1970s, then you'd be, well, getting on a bit now, wouldn't you? I wonder, am I alone in feeling this? I'm sure I'm not. But one announcement early in 2024 did rather stop me in my tracks, as well as inspiring the subjects of this episode of our podcast. On January the 4th, 2024, the death of David Soul was announced. Now I am sure that just the mention of his name brings back all kinds of happy memories of 1970s life to many of you. He was a cultural icon of the decade. Not only was he one half of the coolest detective duo on the planet, but he was also a hugely successful recording artist and starred in one of the most disturbing TV miniseries I remember seeing as a child. Yes, David Soul was huge, but slightly disturbingly, he was aged 80 when he passed away, and that was truly shocking, as well as being sad. 
What's also made it something which stopped me in my tracks was that the news immediately took me right back to the mid to late 1970s, where Starsky and Hutch was often the highlight of a Saturday night in front of the television, which was just about the only time during the week when my family consistently sat down and watched together. And we also had the weekly treat of eating our dinner in front of the TV too, something which was not really allowed during the week. We look back on Saturday Night TV and my family's rituals in one of our early episodes from October 2020, so I won't go into too many more details, other than repeating the fact that what we did eat in front of the TV was the same thing every week. Spaghetti bolognese. Sounds a bit dull, but even that reminds me of my mother in the kitchen baking on a Saturday afternoon before preparing the bolognese sauce in advance of the Saturday Night ritual. So David Soul is no longer with us. He was born David Solberg on the 28th of August 1943 in Chicago. His mother June was a teacher and his father Richard was a Lutheran minister and head of education for the Lutheran Church in America. Because of his father's church involvement the family moved often and lived all over the US as well as spending time in Germany just after the war and in Mexico. Whilst in Mexico the young David learned to play the guitar and decided at that point to become a professional musician. Not quite sure how that sat with his parents, or indeed with his brother, who became a Lutheran minister much like his father. But the church's loss was to become our gain. Sol became an actor, which he apparently saw as a way of earning some money and having a bit of fun until he was discovered as a great musician. He even appeared on TV regularly in the 1960s, as a character called The Covered Man, where he wore a mask while singing, and proclaim that he wants to be known for his music. Hang on, isn't that just like that mass singer thing that's on now? Nothing new under the sun, is there? Anyway, eventually he was signed up as an actor by Columbia Pictures, which led to roles in TV shows including Star Trek and The Streets of San Francisco. He even ended up with a big part in Magnum Force, the 1973 Dirty Harry sequel with Clint Eastwood which was one of my favourite films that I shouldn't really have seen as a young teenager. This is a forty-four Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and it could blow your head clean off. Do you feel lucky? But having said that, I didn't see the movie until after Starsky and Hutch, so I saw David Soul in a different light than if I'd seen the film Cold. If you remember, he plays an idealistic young cop who, along with a group of others, become judge, jury and executioner of criminals they encounter. Sorry, this isn't a film podcast, is it? And I am digressing. David Sell's big break, however, came in 1975, when he was cast in a pilot for a new detective show set in the fictional Bay City in Southern California. Starsky and Hutch was created by William Blinn and produced, like so many other US 70s TV hits, by the Spelling Goldberg production team. And I wonder if many of you recognise that original theme tune that we just played. It was written for the first series to fit the gritty, realistic idea behind the show, which was featuring two tough undercover cops dealing with the low life of Southern California. But that's not quite how it turned out. What the producers hadn't realised until they started shooting the show was that they had created one of the great buddy relationships of television history, as the two stars of the show had a chemistry which leapt off the screen and gradually became the focus of the show itself. Here's a reminder for you if, inexplicably, you don't remember the show. Paul Michael Glazer starred as Dave Starsky, a New York-raised army veteran with a tough streetwise attitude which got results. David Soule played his partner, Ken Hutchinson, or Hutch as he was known, who was, quite honestly, a bit of a smoothie. He liked the ladies and thought of himself as refined and intellectual, with a love of fine arts and good food. By the way, 
all of this, whether it's Starsky, Hutch or anything else, seemed like something from another planet compared to my life as a child in northwest England. So both Starsky and Hutch were incredibly cool and captivating. The show launched in Britain in 1976 and had an immediate impact. The whole show oozed excitement compared to the dull brown and beige of 1970s Britain, and the two stars quickly became heartthrobs in the UK, and Saturday nights were eagerly awaited to see what these two cool guys would be up to next. Clearly, the chemistry between the two leads was important, as was the tight scripting and memorable action sequences. But one of the stars of the show was Southern California itself. It appeared to be so exciting and vibrant and full of extrovert characters, some really nasty bad criminals, and loads and loads of beautiful people. So not too much like Warrington, I suppose. It was also the first TV show, I remember, that openly featured discussion of things like pimps, hookers and drug dealers, all of which was pretty revolutionary for BBC One on a Saturday night, and very exciting for young children. There were also some great supporting characters, like the long-suffering Captain Dobie, played by Bernie Hamilton, who did a great line in exasperation when our two heroes had pushed the limits of the law in their investigations, and the outrageously flamboyant informant Huggy Bear, played by Antonio Fargus, who was unbelievably cool, but had inside knowledge of just about everything which went on in the Southern Californian underworld. Thinking about it, the criminal fraternity must have been a bit thick, really, not to see that Huggy Bear was always talking to Starsky and Hutch, and soon after that, somebody almost inevitably was arrested. But perhaps I'm overthinking things again. Oh, and there was also the car. A highlight for many younger viewers, and probably quite a few older ones too. The pair tore round the streets in a red Gran Torino, which had a huge white tick down the side, or flash, I'm not quite sure how you describe it, which, looking back, probably wasn't the best choice for a pair of undercover detectives, as it was blindingly obvious whenever they drove towards a crime scene. The car itself, though, was iconic and became synonymous with the show and, for me, still remains a 70s icon. I remember there were several toy versions available and I also remember playing Starsky and Hutch in the playground, pretending to be in the car and shouting out Zebra 3, Zebra 3, which was the car's call sign, as opposed to uh, Zebra, as we used to say in those days. Just saying Zebra seemed to add to the coolness of it all even more. The show took Britain by storm and was hugely popular throughout the second half of the 1970s. David Soule and Paul Michael Glazer were mobbed by screaming fans on their visits to the UK, and, as mentioned earlier, the gritty, realistic nature of the show was very quickly dropped, and the scripts concentrated on the sparky, funny, and devoted nature of the relationship between the two main characters. They also replaced the original theme tune with one which was a bit more in keeping with the jokey, buddy theme of the show. The show ran for 92 episodes before Columbia cancelled it in 1979. There were various reasons for the show's cancellation. It was expensive to make, with all the location shots and car chases. Paul Michael Glazer had become tired of his role, and, as happened so often, US viewers began to desert the show. But for David Soule, he had already taken the chance that international stardom had given to him of returning to his first love, music. And boy, he really made the most of the opportunity. Don't give up on us, baby. We're still worth one more try. I know we put a last one by. Just for the rainy evening. But maybe 
stars are few Don't give up on us, I know We can still come through So not content with being a star of a top-rated detective show and an international heartthrob, David Soul became a number one best-selling singer. His breakthrough hit, Don't Give Up On Us, reached number one in the US, Australia and Canada, as well as spending four weeks at number one in the UK in January and February 1977. It was the second best-selling UK single of 1977, behind Mull of Kintyre, and only helped propel Soul's popularity into the stratosphere especially with women of all ages. But was he satisfied? Oh no. He then took Silver Lady to number one in October 1977, in an absolutely vintage year for the man. Seemingly, he could do no wrong. And, in 1979, he took the lead role in a TV miniseries adaptation of a Stephen King novel, which was yet another TV show which was to give me nightmares. Salem's Lot is a TV show which many people of a similar age to me remember vividly. It was a tale of vampires descending onto a small town in America and the gradual takeover of the town by the undead. So what, you might say? That doesn't sound too scary. But for me, the show was one of those programmes which was just full of menace and threat in the way it was made. So while there were some pretty graphic and violent scenes in and amongst, the whole atmosphere of the filming and the underlying menace were the most disturbing elements and the things which caused me lack of sleep. David Soul played the main character, Ben Mears, who returns to the town of Salem's Lot and gradually begins to notice odd things are going on. Now, I haven't seen the miniseries for at least 40 years, but I still remember how unsettling it was, and David Soul's performance was mighty impressive, as was a very creepy turn from James Mason, of all people. All pretty disturbing. So David Soul himself ended the 1970s as a huge star. A best-selling recording artist and a man seemingly at the height of his career. But, like so many stars, it didn't seem to make him happy and his personal life was pretty tumultuous. He was married five times and had six children and he enjoyed a difficult time in the 1980s suffering from alcohol addiction and being involved in domestic violence when he attacked his then-wife, Patty Kane Sherman when she was seven months pregnant. After several attempts at rehab, David Soule finally quit drinking and embarked on a more civilised life, spending more and more time in the UK before becoming a British citizen in 2004. He became a regular on the West End stage and married a British woman, Helen Snell. He also popped up from time to time in British TV shows such as the Inspector Moore spin-off, Lewis, where he was murdered very quickly into the programme. Little Britain and Holby City. He also appeared in the film version of Irving Welsh's book Filth, playing a seedy character miming along to the words of his own hit, Silver Lady. It's said that he deeply regretted his wild years and the harm he caused to others, and he did spend time speaking to groups affected by alcohol and domestic violence. It seems, though, like his final years were calmer and more serene, so I think we can all be thankful for that. For me, David Soul will always be an icon of the 1970s and will be forever associated with that time. Whether it's watching him and Paul Michael Glazer on a Saturday night with spaghetti bolognese or hearing him sing on the radio or on top of the pops, he's a figure who takes me back to happy times and I will remember him fondly, riding his silver motorbike through the Californian sunshine.
Do you have happy memories of David Soul and Starsky and Hutch? Let me know at www.my70stvchildhood.com or leave a message on our various social media pages. Or failing that, you can email me, oliver at my70stvchildhood.com That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening and don't forget to like, rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back next week with our next quiz and in a fortnight for another episode of the podcast. So take care and join me again soon for more from my 70s TV childhood.